Uh, I got it. I already got it. Okay, I'm gonna hit the, hit the button now. Three, two, yep. one. We make a good team, you and me, so that's something the two of you can bond over. Welcome to Legends of Gotham, where we talk about Fox's hit series Gotham, set in the world of Batman. I'm Bill Meeks. And I'm Anne-Marie D. Simone. And we are here for our winter finale coverage. Can you believe it? My hands are going in and out of the camera. It's so we'll, freaking cool. We'll go with a bang yeah. or a boom. Some people might be confused. I'm listening to this on a podcast. What are you talking about a camera? That's because we're coming to you live 8.30 p.m. EST on Wednesday. Now, we had to delay a day because of a little family situation. There was a kid with a swollen, infected thumb. It's yeah, disgusting. Yeah, Jerome got listen. to his thumb. It was awful. <laughs> but 8.30 p.m., usually on Tuesday night, tonight on Wednesday night, with our chatters over at twitch.tv slash universebox or live.universebox.com. Either or works. Uh, we have a Cossack Motion, Lone Wolf Pack, uh, Talking to Weed, the Derby Kid, and usually a few more people pop in there a couple minutes after we start. Absolutely. So, so uh, thank you guys for joining us. Always oh, feel yeah. free to join us in the future uh for sure but uh amory we had something we wanted to uh d tell people before we get into the main discussion so right? i should put down my toys yes okay. yes put down your toys put down my toys okay so our good old buddies casa commotion who are over in the chat room so say hi um are looking for some new cast members they are looking for uh actors to be jerome and or enigma so if you are in <laughs> central florida and you mm -hmm. look at all like either of those characters and you like to dress up <laughs> and go to conventions and do different events there's a cosplay crew looking for you totally looking for you and they're pretty awesome so, so did you tell them how to get a hold of them uh we've got the email it'll be over in the in the show notes the show at legendsofgotham.com. It's casacomotion at gmail.com. C-O-S-A-C-O-M-M-O-T-I-O-N. And that is why I left that to you. At gmail.com. And uh, obviously, obviously, you know. Or you uh, can reach out to us and we'll put you in contact. Legends of Gotham show notes for this episode, episode 95. We're almost at episode 100. What the what? I know. And we're probably going to try and time out episode 100 for around the time Gotham comes back in April. So there won't thing, be a lot of Gotham over the next three months. y'all. One thing we'd like for y'all to do uh, in, in preparation for our 100th episode, we would love for you to write in or send in a voicemail in letting us know how you found our show, how you found Gotham. And how our show has helped you with Gotham is maybe one of your favorite moments. Uh, the emails, or something you like about us. That'd yeah, be great, too. The email is legendsofgotham at gmail.com. And the voicemail number is 424-274-2352. Again, that's 424-274-2352. Okay, so uh, I, we are going to get into the main discussion here. Lots to talk about so in this Jokerific episode of eee. Gotham tonight. But uh, first, Emery, why don't you hit us up uh, with the rhyming, riddling episode summary. <clears throat> Who doesn't love a night at the circus? These carnival games are making me nervous. A is Gotham a city without its own hero? Thanks to Jerome, the number ticks up from zero. Will Ed kill the penguin? He certainly wants to. Is a friend still a friend after he shoots you? Will Jerome's Arkham cell come with a fun with funny blonde amenities? He teaches Bruce the gentle art of making enemies. The gentle art. The gentle art of making of enemies. Making enemies. Mm -hmm. Anne Marie, yes. what'd you think? <laughs> I like squeeing. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, but ah, yeah, it was it was ah. a fantastic episode. So many questions, but so mm. much amazingness, like so much. Yeah, it definitely made me feel sorry for people who were like, I don't want to watch a show about before about stupid, blah blah blah. Th this was legitimately one of my favorite. Batman Joker stories I've ever seen outside mm -hmm. of the comics, like ever. And that includes, you know, adaptations of the comics, Batman the Animated Series, everything. I thought this was that good. It was amazing. Like, again, for being young actors, they're really, really good. Yeah, definitely. Like, they're definitely. really good. And getting better all the time. Uh, let's see. Always getting better. Over in the chat room, uh, let's see. Um, the Derby Kid says she'll definitely send something in for her hundredth episode. And uh, Lone Wolf Pack would like to pet my microphone. Don't worry, so I do that all the time. Excellent. Okay, so uh, let's. Oh, and uh, the Derby Kid also says it was the perfect Batman Joker story. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, that's my first point. I want to talk about something. <coughs> something I've titled. I'm every Joker. It's all in me. Okay, so 
Jerome, obviously, this is not his first time at the rodeo, at the Gotham rodeo that's actually a the circus. Carnival. The Carnival. The Carnival. The Carnival as it was. But uh, I, I, I really, something really stuck out to me this okay. episode that kind of supports something that I've been saying in every one of Jerome's appearances. Mm. Okay, so if it was hinted at before, it's become very apparent in this episode that Cameron is playing uh, Jerome as several different incarnations of the Joker. Yes. He's taking a lot of influence from a lot of different versions of the Joker. Okay, so in this episode, the way it really stuck out to me, uh, everything that happens before Jerome puts on his hat at the circus Mm -hmm. is a very obvious, very on-the-nose almost homage to Jared Leto's performance in the Suicide Squad movie this past summer. Mm -hmm. And this is very much unlike the other Jeromes we've seen uh, throughout the series. Uh, You know, the voice, the mannerisms, the straight jacket. He just needed the gold. Yeah, yeah, he he needed needed the gold. Not even the girl, girl, the jacket. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's all very Leto and all very awesome. I I, I really loved it. Uh, But after uh, he puts the hat on, uh, he becomes the animated series version of the Joker. A little Mm -hmm. childish, you know, slapping his butt in front of the crowd and stuff like that. But chilling. Turning the guffaws to growls on a dime. Mm -hmm. So so there's also a lot of... Like with the cowboy? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Where he's all happy and he's slapping his butt and... And then he's like, okay, you're laughing too much. Boom. Uh, But, you know, so there's also a lot of Joker comic book references throughout this episode. A couple I wanted to point out was uh, the way he makes uh, Bruce. uh, He he makes up Bruce. He does his makeup. Yeah, he does the makeup. Uh, You know, the blood included uh, is very much, I think, an homage to this uh, killing joke. Actually, that's the wrong shot. Let me get that for you. (laughs) Try that again. Yeah, let's try that one more time. One more time. There we go. There it is. Oh, okay. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Killing Joke homage cover that got pulled off of uh, one of the D- the Batgirl comic uh, last summer. Mm. Uh, but you know where he's kind of doing the the smile in on blood. Batgirl's face in blood. So you know it was very much an homage to this cover. Uh, but in the makeup also subtly suggests uh, Batman's cowl, uh, the bloody smile standing in for the mouth hole of his cowl. Like if I show you this poster here, mm-hmm. like that mouth, the the frowny face that uh-huh. he has on, on Bruce there it is just the exact line of the mouth hole in Batman's cowl. And then the eyes are kind of oh. dark, shaded in and dark and everything. <gasps> Even like the eyebrows almost suggest the uh, Adam yeah. West version of the oh. of the Batman costume. So so you know I thought I thought that was very very interesting. And uh, also there was the showdown in the mirror maze mm-hmm. uh, where Bruce almost kills Jerome, and it's ripped right out of the climax of the Dark Knight Returns. Like one of the classic uh, Batman comic book series. Mm-hmm. There's a mirror maze situation. They get into a fight mm-hmm. and Batman almost kills the Joker again a- and, you know, stops himself, I think. Right? I- I th- well, I think they kind of beat each other to like a standstill, <laughs> if I remember correctly. It's been a couple of years since I've read it. But, you know, that was very much an homage to The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, e- even a lot of the what Jerome says in that scene mm-hmm. about uh, we make a really good team and mm-hmm. you know, all this stuff about like uh, you complete me kind of stuff uh, is it, very you core Joker stuff. Me. <laughs> you complete me. Sorry. But uh, we, we've already pointed out the obvious homages uh, in the past to Nicholson mm-hmm. Ledger and even Cesar Romero's Joker yeah. uh, that we've already seen on the show. But with this Joker uh, or Jerome uh, being in a, he's the Joker. He's the Joker. Uh, in Amalgan of so many other uh, Jokers, it makes me wonder if we've seen Jerome's true face yet. Uh, you know, obviously we've seen the face under the face, but I mean, what a this lot. character is really going to be when he becomes the, the, the most prominent villain on the series. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he finally becomes the Joker proper, will it be a truly original take on the Joker? Or will he just take like a piece from Leto, a piece from Ledger, a piece from Nicholson, a piece from Romero, and kind of mash them up into a thing? And I mean, that, that's kind of been uh, the way it's gone already, but they, they've always been kind of very separated. Like, oh, the, like his first scene and that, that questioning scene, that's kind of the Nicholson Joker. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, he shows up in hashtag maniacs and he might be a little bit more Cesar Romero, you know, that sort of thing. So I think he'll come into his, I think he'll have his own. Yeah. I think he will definitely develop his own. And um, I don't know if you mentioned this later, but how he studied mm-hmm. over the year or so since his death. Oh, yeah. He, he, um, he, he, he's read a ton he's of He's read Batman everything, comics. basically. 
he's I'm sure he's studied every show, every movie, every everything because he knows this is such an iconic role. Yeah. And the opportunity to get to do it. And he wants to make it his own. But he, I think it's this is a lot of, uh, you know you pay you pay your respects mm-hmm. to those who have come before you yeah and they've all been such a very specific mm-hmm. and important and i think anyone who's ever played the joker too they're like okay i have to knock this out of the park with my own take yes. straight away cuz you know it's usually a movie or it's a tv show where who knows if they're going to get a second season so they're like right. i have to go all out with this make it my own and make my joker the joker for this generation right where cameron has has the he's ability here one he's not the joker proper yet so he can mm-hmm. kind of play around with all these different takes and when he finally does become the joker proper maybe in season 4 uh you know uh, i he might be able to give it a real originality and really like carve it out and make it his own after kind of saying, okay, we know that the Joker is an important character. Everyone has their favorite Joker. Here's all of them. Now get out of the way for my take on the character. I, th- I definitely can see that being what it is. Yeah. For and show. yeah, for, for sure. It, uh, amazing, amazing stuff from him the entire episode. I'm sure we're going to be talking more and more and more, more, about and, it. more and more and more over in the chat room. A lone wolf Paco four says this one should be called face off. And uh, we called That's last week's true. episode face off. Off, ah. so. And uh, then L- Lone Wolf Pack also says, I was going to say uh, that Jerome, since he has woken up or been revived, doesn't act like uh, the Jerome that we met initially back when Gallivant was alive uh, mm-hmm. the first time. Very true. And he actually mentioned in an interview this week that, uh, you know, some of that guttural, <coughs> mm-hmm. that stuff he, he is taking as, you know, Jerome got killed by being stabbed in the throat. He's so healing. he's like, I want to bring like a lot of like throat noises into the into the performance. And which it, it works. You can totally every tell. single time. It's very effective and disgusting. <laughs> yeah, all at once. And the Derby Kid says, I totally didn't even catch that Killing Joke reference. Nice. So, uh, very good. Yeah, but uh, I'm every Joker. It's all in me. Gonna kill the Batman, baby. Okay, so uh, speaking of the Batman, you wanted to talk a little bit about Batman, Release the Batman, ladies and gentlemen. Release the Batman. He's out. So I know we've said this before, but I feel 100% confident in saying that this is actually the episode where Bruce becomes Batman. Mm -hmm. I think it's very obvious. Well, I was was thinking about it when I was uh, riding my scooter home tonight. And I remember because, you know, one of the things that was introduced here was the no kill rule. Yes. And I remember very definitively declaring that that rule had been created in the episode with Matches Malone. And it hadn't. It hadn't. It It hadn't been stated. I think it had been. I think it was inspired in that episode. And then they gave they kind of gave voice to it and they made a firm. This is the rule in this episode. Absolutely. Um, Like I said, he may not be rocking the cap and the or the cape and the cow, but he is embracing all of the movements, the mentality and the behaviors of a classic Batman. He's quick and he's quiet. I cannot even imagine trying to sneak and hide in a room of mirrors. Yet (laughs) somehow he knows the exact right places to stand Mm -hmm. to not get hit, to run, to reveal himself just as much as he wants Mm-hmm. And they come from behind. Like, yeah. it is a room of mirrors. How are you coming from behind? And he doesn't even see you. Like, I, it's... You know, my favorite Bat moment in this episode was after the rules speech. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's getting up. Well, yeah, when he's just like... <laughs> and he gets up and he, he kind of like looks at the camera for a second. And then he like gets uh-huh. up very suddenly and uh-huh. turns and walks out. They, so Batman. That's so Batman. That's so Batman. Uh, let's see. He is smart and uses his wits to buy himself time. Sure, Jerome knows that he's... He's just doing it to buy time, but he has a good point and, um, with all of it. And it works out to his advantage because he's able to escape thanks to the stapling. Mm-hmm. That was repulsive. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I, I mean, they, I'm not going to lie. Such... I almost cried when he dropped the staple. I was like, oh, <gasps> and then he's like, Bloop, got another one. There were such great sound effects with that, too. Like <laughs> uh, squishy. So many squishy sound effects <laughs> this episode. Um, let's see. That means um, squishy. I will not kill. Boom. There it is. Black and white. Just like you said, like Mm -hmm. it's been stated. It's been defined. It is his character. And I mean, I kind of appreciate at least somebody's not killing people in the show because everybody else is like, very true. Taking them out. Uh, The fine line between justice and vengeance. Both Bruce and Alfred know that there is a line and that he tiptoed right up to the edge. Stopping Mm -hmm. himself from actually killing Jerome was that edge. That was where he defined it for himself. I think that, the line of between justice and vengeance is I will not kill. 
Yeah. That's that's as far as he can take it. So now he knows he can go. And if he's like, I have nothing else to do but kill this person. Okay, I'm done now. <laughs> I can back away. Um, it helps him create really that possibly the, the first and possibly only rule that he is training for. Mm-hmm. Though it's still not really defined what he's training for. Yeah. He's just training. Um, Although I thought it was funny because Alfred, Alfred, when Jerome was about to take Bruce from Wayne Manor, mm -hmm. Alfred was like, Master Bruce, uh, this is what we've been training for. And I was like, to get kidnapped? That's what you were training for? No, to defend himself against the kidnapper. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's see. Now that Jerome is off to Arkham for an undetermined amount of time, I can't wait to see what this version of Bat Bruce does to take on the Court of Owls. Because I think Mm. this, this was that motivation. This was this inspiration. This was this... Um, I've lived through how many times getting kidnapped and tied to a pole. Mm-hmm. I got this, people. Speaking of the Court of Owls, we... All right, let's do it. Well, well we didn't mention that uh, the owl got broke. Yeah, we do. Oh, do we? Okay. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a He didn't read my points. Okay, but uh, this uh, vengeance versus justice thing, yeah. I, I, I want to stick on this for a minute more. Okay. I will first over in the chat room, um, Lone Wolf Pack says uh, that uh, I wonder how... Are, how they're going to re-enchat Jerome's face. I hope they don't make it nice and pretty. They won't. Um, I think my theory is that, uh, cause I, I was in a scooter accident a few weeks back and you know, I had a pretty nasty cut on my arm here for a while. Yeah. New skin's growing back. It's pretty much healed, but that skin is much, much whiter and lighter than the skin around it. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe they don't reattach his face. Maybe he, they have to cause it had his lips, but I, I'm just saying that, this was completely scrape free of skin, you yeah, know. So I, I'm aware I cleaned it. Yeah. So so I, I'm saying that maybe if all of the skin is removed from your face, maybe it'll eventually grow back, but it'll be much whiter uh, than the skin around it, which could give us the white skin, like the white face yeah. Joker uh, that we know and love. Okay, but I the biggest joke uh, in the in this episode is really. Uh, Jerome's thesis statement. He offers this thesis statement about the state of Gotham City Mm -hmm. in his talks with Bruce at the circus. Mm -hmm. He claims that the people of Gotham uh, were just waiting for somebody like him to give them an excuse or give them permission to do evil things like killing their spouses or, you know, whatever. Uh, You know, talk about a messiah complex, uh, which he actually mentions. He does, yeah. You were kind of laughing at me last week for pointing out that he was kind of like the messiah of the Joker cult. But no, he actually called himself a messiah in this episode. But, you know, this is uh, this whole thesis statement is level one core Joker stuff. Mm-hmm. I, the biggest joke in his mind is that everybody isn't already acting like him. Uh, that's what he finds the funniest is that humanity has put on this sort of a uh, false face, mm-hmm. if, if you will, uh, the, of morals and politeness and decency, mm-hmm. and that it's all just a big joke. It's all just, uh, they, they're denying themselves, and he's here to show humanity that it doesn't have to be that way, that you can... Do what you want. Yeah, you, you, can, you can do what you want, and there are no repercussions, and that's the biggest joke of all. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it, so I, I think this goes back to Grant Morrison's concept that the Joker is super sane, which I've talked about before in the episode Andy Bruce Wayne from yes. a number of years ago. Andy Bruce Wayne. Uh, but uh, he sees past what we all tell ourselves to keep the world spinning to the dark heart of it all. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he, he's, not, he's not crazy. He's just really, really sane, in his mind anyway. He's really, really sane. He doesn't have these picadillos that everybody else has about, oh, don't kill people. Be nice right. to people. Don't hurt people. Uh, he, he's like, no, I, we're animals. We're beings of yeah. impulse. And you shouldn't deny that. And, mm-hmm. and that, So that's his kind of super sanity that Grant Morrison attributed him with. Right. Uh, so in a lot of ways, and in a reversal of how the story usually goes, Jerome's thesis here creates the Batman. Bruce can't live with the fact that Jerome could be right, and I, I think very much wants to prove him wrong. And I think Batman, on Earth G anyway, will be a reaction to this one dark night in Bruce's youth. Uh, so it, it's where <laughs> dark night, dark night, but night instead of night. Yeah, it, it's night where he that. decides to wage a battle against the concept of evil instead of one against the people who did evil things to him. It's where he realizes that you have to go to the source. You can't, you know. Killing uh, Matches Malone. That wouldn't have done any good. Isn't going to bring back his parents and isn't going to keep 
other, other people... parents from dying because they're still evil in the world. So what he has to do is he has to fight against the concept of evil. He has okay. to stand for good to counteract this thesis statement from Jerome and obviously a, a growing sentiment in Gotham City, which is going more and more crazy by the day. Yeah, but then it stops after they capture him. They said it's already, it, as soon as the word spread that Jerome had been captured, it started to Well, I mean, it, it stops that threat of it, but right. there's still, you know, oh, the, it's the penguins be and the enigmas and the mad hatters I... and the executioners and you're guilty. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it, it's very exciting though. And uh, I also thought at the end there in the, in the mirror uh, maze, when he's about to kill Jerome and he looks in the mirror, I, I think him. it's the first time he kind of sees Batman in himself. Mm -hmm. I, he, he's staring in the mirror and obviously he has the makeup on. So it looks kind it kind of suggests the Batman mask anyway, but it's really more about the eyes. You can see it in his eyes that he, he mm -hmm. realizes what he could do and he realizes what he shouldn't do. Right. And it's all thanks to Jerome. So I don't so think he thank should. thank you, Jerome. I think he should get a, a sanity certificate from Arkham Asylum. Ooh. <laughs> he is like the one person you really don't want to give a sanity certificate. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Over in the chat room, uh, Cost Commotion is here. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, and uh, let's see here. Uh, Lone Wolf, Lone Wolf Pack says, says, I'm not familiar with the comics. Are Penguin, Riddler, and Joker all civil slash friends with each other against Batman? Or is it more every bad guy for himself? Uh, well, the answer is yes. They, uh, I, I'd say yes, both of those. I think I yeah. think it's really every man for himself, but the enemy of my enemy is my friend yeah. sort of thing to where they have a common enemy in Batman. And, you know, the more people involved, the easier it is to take on a powerful enemy like that. Right. But at the same time, if... You know, the Penguin is messing with Joker's scheme. Joker's not going to well. be afraid to, like, slit a throat if he needs to. Or shoot him. Yeah. And uh, Hawk79 says, depends on the error. That's very true, too. I uh, enjoy that you actually call him by his name instead of yeah, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby Hawk. <laughs> I, but it, it definitely uh, depends on the era, era how friendly they are. And, yeah. you know, sometimes there there's, like, different pairs that are more friendly than other pairs. Right. Like, the Joker and the Riddler, actually, very common friends compatriots i don't yeah. see that happening in this maybe maybe not no all depends on how uh, the next part of the season goes you know i, guess, I think it does trailer. wait and see what happens in april <clears throat> other things that we can't wait for april to find out about this court of owls yes that they seem to have like forgotten about for a few episodes and whoop they're back so <laughs> Catherine, aka the owl lady seems very very nervous about this episode she doesn't like all the chaos she doesn't like all the dumpster fires of gotham and all of that. Um, mm -hmm. And she, she mentions possibly needing to step in and calm things down. But how in the world is she going to do that? Like, is there a plan? Like, does she have a giant start over button? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you control the crazy cults? Yeah. In darkness. Mm -hmm. Like, that really confused me a I, little. I, I, I will say I do really like the cult because the Joker always has these henchmen, like yes. an infinite Everything. supply of henchmen. Yeah, and, and here they are. Yeah, this is kind of the origin for them. That is kind of fun. I yeah. never thought about that part. Um, Let's see. Yanni Bruce is back and ready to get into action. <laughs> yes. This makes me so happy. You know why? I love his creepy as heck music. Although he doesn't have the Yanni hair anymore. No, he doesn't. But he's very much like this. And he's very proper because he's basically plastic. So there's that. He's playing Bruce Wayne. He's playing Bruce Wayne. Uh, Uncle In Frank. In the Bruce Wayne story. <laughs> Andy Bruce Wayne. Um, Uncle Frank is pulling Jim into the court. Or, you know, he'll be killed, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty much the understanding is if he doesn't fall into line, he gets killed. I will say that back when he first made his appearance as a mysterious hand yes, in the chair. You called it as his uncle. I said it was Bru or Jim's uncle. Yeah, and you did. Hey, you turned know. out to be right. There you go. Uh, let's see. Is it part of the reason... Is part of the reason they want to pull him in because whatever they are plan planning, planning with Yanni, uh, <laughs> planning with Yanni Bruce, um, I feel that Jim may agree to whatever the initial ask is because it's his uncle. He's going to yeah. be like, all right, sure. What do you need? Uh, but once he realized that this Bruce is not the real Bruce, which will take him about 30 seconds, um, <laughs> things are going to get a little messy. Oh, I'm sure. And I, I don't know how. I don't know why, but it's going to be crazy. Uh, let's see. The court obviously knows that Bruce has well, had the crystal owl. Is this a plan of retaliation or a safety measure because of that? Because they don't know it's broken. Yeah, very They just true. know he has it. Mm -hmm. So they don't know. As what far they as we know, they don't know it's broken. I mean, right. 
Like I, I'm, I'm just saying that maybe, maybe it has like a homing device. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Here. It's a crystal. Yeah. Like there, it, it's just a plain crystal though. Like there wasn't even like padding on the bottom mm. for them to hide a homing device. So yeah. I'm gonna go with no. Uh, speaking of the crystal owl, though, how bad does it suck that it's broken? <laughs> like yeah. I wanted to yell out with them. I was like, no. I'm just wondering if that is going to terminate the mystery or if they're going to try and glue it back together or something like that. Bruce and Alfred didn't seem to really know that they what they had on their hands. Will this delay them trying to repair it? Is it repairable? What will the court say or do if and when they find out the owl is broken? I want to see them sitting there gluing it back together. Yeah. Definitely. I want to see them around the table having a cup a cuppa. And, and some scones and maybe, gluing this back together. You know, like families do like big, the big giant puzzles. Maybe Lucius can do it over the course of like 10 episodes. Because that's how long it takes Lucius <laughs> to do anything. But now he's, he's working work- at the GCPD. Now he's like Speedy yeah. Gonzalez. He got this. So I don't know. Um, yeah. However, I would like one of these owl figurines because totally my style. Totes. Totes. Over in the chat room, uh, let's see here. Uh, Cost Commotion says uh, Yanni Bruce will be busy. Yes. Uh, Wynn says maybe the owls have a tactical nuke. That's about what it would take to quiet Gotham. Very yeah, true. That's very true. And uh, Bobby Hawk suggests crazy glue. Crazy glue. glue. And one also says Broken Birds would be a good title for this episode. You know, I like that. Hmm, broken Birds, huh? Broken Birds. If only we had somebody who was empowered to go down to the bottom of our dock and put potential episode titles in, <laughs> like I'm doing right now. Totally. Because we're totally. about to move on, but I feel All right, Lone Wolf Puck, but there will be the stash of real Bruce during... Wait, where will they stash real Bruce during this time? Maybe they'll send him some random place far away from Gotham and he'll learn more Batmanish stuff. Mm-hmm. Or will they just stuff him in a dungeon somewhere? Yeah, now, Homie's getting out of a dungeon somewhere. Now that they have rules, I mean, training is the next logical step. It is the next so. logical step. Okay, uh, so I guess I guess I, we're going to get back to the main discussion in just a second. But first, it's time to look, look at this Joker. Look at this Joker. Look at this Joker. Everybody look at this Joker. Look at this Joker. Look at this Joker. Look at this Joker. He's not a fire poker. Yes, look at this Joker where we point out the, the references, Easter eggs, outright appearances, references again uh, to the Joker on Gotham. We've been doing this since episode one, and I have a feeling that by we season might be done. four, we might be done with it. Sad face. I mean, you know, we've been so many, uh, so many entries here, so many, so many mentions of the so Joker. many drawings of the ha 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 ha. ha. Yes, definitely. And in fact, uh, we'd probably have an easier time at this point calling out all the non-Joker references uh, yeah. in this episode. So, especially instead, this episode. Uh, we we got a voicemail from somebody is it Big J, Mister J, Big something J? like that. Mister J. But we figured we'd go ahead and play this. So I uh, so uh, take it away, Big J. What up? <laughs> Greetings and salutations. <laughs> I would just like to ring in on the episode that just aired of Gotham. <laughs> I am, uh, let's just say, Big J. Sounds familiar. <laughs> mm, <little bit. laughs> and I have to admit, this last episode really hit me hard. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I have to admit it was something of a spectacle, the uh, whole encounter between Jerome and Bruce. But uh, with that being said, you know, it uh, really left me baffled and uh, <laughs> a little different to, in that uh, set aside. But at that point set aside, I would just like to point out it was definitely a good point of writing on all the behalf of everyone on the staff of that show. But uh, on the other notes and other notes, I would just like to say the other thing that really, really left me floored was the ending to that show. <laughs> that between old Nigma and Oswald. Who could have seen that one coming, huh? <laughs> I mean, uh, I think it uh, left us all a little baffled. <laughs> but still, I like to think like old Harvey Cantell said on Reservoir Dogs. You know, a bullet wound to the guts 
it won't kill you. Not right away. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it will leave you in a lot of pain. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. For all of you Gotham fans, you haven't okay. seen the last of old Jerome. I mean, after all, Gordon left him uh, rotting in a little cell. And as for Bruce, uh, well, it, I mean, it's nice to know that he's got some kind of rules that he has set aside for himself now. But uh, we'll see how long it takes for him to break. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope you all have a great good night. Okay, lock <laughs> this the doors. Is Big J or DJ signing off. <laughs> wow, thank you very much, Big J. That was completely terrifying. I need to lock and bolt all of the windows now. Also, very good job on the Amazing laugh. Amazing laugh. Yeah, I had. We have no idea who we it have was. No idea. Uh, it, it could be uh, one of our regular listeners. It could be Cameron Mongahan himself. Who no, knows? that wasn't his laugh. Yeah, probably not. Not his laugh. Uh, but, but thank you very lovely. much, uh, Big J. Okay, uh, we're going to get back to the main discussion in just one moment. Uh, but first, we wanted to tell you uh, about a little contest we're running uh, that has to do a little bit with Gotham. So watch this video and we'll be right back. Gotham Bulletin. Penguin and Nygma are attacking the GCPD. There, we infiltrated the GCPD. You'll pay for not being my friend, Jim Gordon. Listen here, you pencil neck dweebs. Bullock and Gordon are here on the case. When is the time of a clock like the whistle of a train? When it's two to two. Karate action. Real character voices you provide. And now, Arkham action stabby babs. The jig's up, Barbara. You're coming with me. Any chance you'll let me gut you like a fish? Ah, sorry! It's fun for the whole family. Win Bruce, Saz, or Stabby Babs figures by entering our Gotham Sweetheart Contest. Three chances to win. Follow us at twitch.tv slash universebox, support us at patreon.com slash universebox, or leave a review for any of our podcasts on iTunes. We'll pick the winners on February 14th. Gotham action figures from Diamond Select Toys, available online and at toy stores nationwide. Bring, Bring Gotham, Gotham to life! life. Yes, the Gotham Sweethearts Woo-hoo. Contest, uh, which will be uh, pew, 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 coming at pew, you have until uh, February 14th, 13th. 13th to enter. So uh, pew, 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 pew. get on that. Now, now and normally we do our Patreon read too, but we're not going to do that since we're Bro, playing the, so many the toy commercial. Uh, we just want to give a shout out to our $5 Star Patrons Club, who we promise not to send Big J your contact info. Oh, yeah, no. Becca Baca, Cliff Sullivan, Angel, Jason Ritter, Monica Jones, Other Anne Marie, Costa Commotion, Sage Worth, A.K. Patty, Jacob Newman, Robert Cattler, Hope Molinex, and Jessica Gonzalez. You guys give us $5 or more per month, and you guys are awesome. You really do, Rob. Seriously awesome, and we promise not to send Big J your big way. We will not. Way. Uh, if you want to be a patron, uh, go to patreon.com slash universe box, and remember, remember to, to think, think outside. outside. Okay, let's talk bat traps. Bat traps. Bat traps. Bat traps. There are several fantastic classic bat traps in this episode, mm-hmm. and I wanted to point them out. Okay, first of all, Ed's acid bath mm-hmm. uh, with the penguin. The absurd slowness of melting the ice to release the chain and drop the acid feels very Batman 66. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, that show was making fun of the overly complicated and ineffective traps villains would use in the comics. Uh-huh. And, and I think that's definitely what the Gotham TV writers were playing on here. Mm-hmm. I, at first, it seemed uh, to me as a viewer, it seemed a little lazy, like, oh, this kind of old-fashioned trap. I guess, I guess that's kind of interesting, an interesting homage. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I get the homage, cool, whatever, Neat. but it's not really strong character work for right. Ed. But then they, d- I thought they did a brilliant job of making Penguin escaping part of Ed's evil plan and kind of necessary to Ed's evil plan because he wanted, he wanted Penguin to know that he was against him. And uh, mm-hmm. then he wanted him to reject Ed because of that and then to have finally lost everything. So right. I, I thought it was kind of a clever way 
they flip that around. Mm-hmm. I oh, by the way, over in the chat room, Cross Commotion says uh, she liked your pigtails in the video, and also that we love you, Legends of Gotham. We, we love, you, love you. Next bat trap, Jerome's shrapnel cannon. Yes. Uh, first of all, I don't think that's how cannons work. No. Nope. Just throw a bunch mm-hmm. of stuff in them and light them. And well, there was already there was the cannonball he put in first. Oh, okay. And then he put all the stuff on top, so the cannonball would push it all out. Oh, would push it all out. And plus, it was a circus cannon too, which I know sometimes they use those for. You know, acrobatics and stuff. So maybe it wasn't a, an actual cannon. It was just One like, could only hope. It just had like a, a thing spring. that would launch it or whatever. But it, but it was also a delicious bat trap, I thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the future Batman's uh, life on the line, I also thought it was funny how I, after it goes off and they go to investigate the pole, there's knives and scissors and everything sticking at all, all directions because you know it blasted it from one angle but it's, it's everywhere. everywhere yeah so i in like many bat traps i, I thought it was interesting that bruce to, bruce escapes using some advantage the g- villain gave him without realizing it earlier mm. in the adventure uh the, the staples in his arms uh, right. is what i'm talking about or his arm is what i'm talking about perhaps this is the moment bruce realizes it would be helpful to carry some basic tools around with him maybe in his belt in a belt of sorts possibly mm-hmm. and uh let's see uh last but not least uh, I wanted to mention the carnival games while not bat traps per se I couldn't get through this episode without mentioning all the wonderfully sadistic carnival games on display at the circus Uh, the, the surprising thing I thought was that so few of them were changed, uh, save for swapping out the target for a warm body. Right. I uh, No, they weren't bat traps, but the important thing is they could have been. Right. Like, every single one of them would have been, like, a perfect bat trap or, like, something mm-hmm. that, like, the villain leaves Batman there to die and walks away and uh, there's someone throwing darts at him. Or, yeah. You know, or there's an electrified pool of water underneath mm-hmm. somebody, that yeah. sort of thing. So, so wonderfully sadistic I, yeah. I absolutely loved it and you wanted to talk a little bit about the carnival i do too, a right? lot of the carnival craziness so the cult seems to have taken over this indoor carnival that somehow still has power it's like the only spot in gotham where you have power um and they're tor- Maybe they had a generator i mean i think more than just a carnal a tiny carnival would have a generator in the town yeah you know like the gcpd maybe <laughs> I don't know, just a thought. Uh, But they're torturing whatever patrons happen to be there. So some of the games that I'd like to point out is Whack-A-Mole. First of all, Whack-A-Mole, a a personal family favorite for me and my mother. Also, But now this is Whack-A-Dead Body, or basically. Trivia, Whack-A-Mole was invented by somebody who lives right here in Orlando named Aaron Fetcher. He's also the guy who created the animatronics for uh, Showbiz Pizza and Chuck E. Cheese. I knew that was coming. So uh, just a little trivia there for you. I hate that. Uh, the dunk tank. So, okay, with this dunk tank, my uh, my issue with the dunk tank and the piranhas was, were one of these crazy people just walking around with a giant bag of piranhas? <laughs> like, there was like a like hundred in there. <laughs> like, like you like, do. Like, did they know? I have my piranhas right here, <laughs> just in case I need them. Um, the carousel of torture. Okay, I kind of felt a little bad for this one because there's like normal people. They were like, we're going on a carousel and now there's a shotgun in their face. <laughs> so not cool. Um, other carnival craziness. So Bruce's makeup with the bloody frown <laughs> gag was disgusting. Um, one thing I was going to point out. So when we, you saw that, um, the makeup face mm-hmm. in the promo pictures, you were like, oh, look, it's makeup. Yeah, However, I assume because of the makeup on the eyes that it was just like he was very sloppy and kind of jokery with it on the mouth. It didn't even occur to me that it would be blood. Right. However, um, small child of five years of age looks at it and goes, ew, he has blood on him. <laughs> like, obviously, he doesn't watch the show because he's five. Um, yeah. but, but I mean, I guess, I guess moving forward, if you're watching Gotham, you have to assume there will blood. be blood. There yeah. will be blood. Also, he really likes Batman, so he kind of mm. knows the way it goes. Um, the cowboy. So here's my thoughts <laughs> on the cowboy. I kind of think that he was a part of the actual carnival, and mm. he was just trying to fit in so that he wasn't tortured. Yeah. And I don't know why he didn't realize when it got quiet to shut up and be quiet. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's... He's now injured or dead. Rip cowboy. Well, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. He sort of, I mean, we didn't see where he got Sean. He could have just got Sean the leg. Probably the back of the head, though. Um, also, did no one notice that Bruce was escaping? There was, I know there was a lot going on <laughs> with, the, with the strike force who somehow isn't dying in every episode now. Um, <laughs> coming in and, you know, Alfred fighting people and all of that. But did nobody see Bruce, like, yanking things out of his arm and, mm-hmm. like, like I, I don't know. Well, even there was know. a lot of commotion. Although, <clears throat> is this the first episode the Strike Force has appeared where nope. one of them didn't die? Last week. Oh, was it last? Yeah. Week? Okay. Yeah. 
Um, which is why I thought it was very Although impressive. I did see one like Joker cult guy uh, get one of the Strike Force guys by his shoulders and pull him back, but then they cut the shot, so he might right. have died. Well, there's that thing though. It's you know in last season i believe it was when we got the strike fours um we knew about each of their deaths so what are you doing i was trying to show the camera my gotham hoodie yes because they've never seen it before <laughs> um <laughs> let's see um but i felt like not necessarily one of the good guys would have seen him escaping but somebody from the cult would have seen him escaping yeah that's probably. actually more what i was thinking because they're all just wackadoodle mm-hmm. um yeah so there's the carnival craziness and note to self don't ever go there uh, over in the chat room, Wynn points out that that is how circus cannons work. Oh. And uh, Bobby Hawk uh, supports that with like the ones they shoot people out of. And, and it doesn't surprise me that they're the two that know this, by yeah, the way. Definitely. Not at all. Mm-mm. And a lone wolf pack uh, says, Shh, no logic about power during the power outage. Okay. Uh, LOL. You know, I always wonder when they kept putting out all the promo stuff. I'm like, but the, pa- the city is in There's darkness. There's electricity. Maybe, you know, a lot of times when circuses are in town, they're out on the outer edges of the town. But this wasn't, it was in a building. It had a ceiling. Oh, okay. It okay. had a, like, they walked in the clown well, I'm saying mouth. still maybe it was out, out on the outskirts where the power outage didn't affect it, maybe. Oh, okay. Although it, it affected Wayne Manor, so. Yeah. Which is pretty out there. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, so now that we've discussed that. Real quick, sick Lee watch update. Okay, so uh, I, Lee is even more short-tempered in this episode when Jim comes to ask about Jerome. She's downright snarky. Uh, the the whole, maybe you guys can talk about that and bond over it or whatever. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it, yeah. w- this is my impression of Lee. <sighs> <laughs> but I just wanted to point uh, this out to carry forward my theory that Mario infected her with the Alice Tetch virus and mm-hmm. uh, that that's going to carry forward throughout this season. Yeah. Uh, in, Do you it, think it, that's how they kill her off? Maybe. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Or maybe she gets thrown in Arkham or something. Because this seems to keep ramping up every episode. Her her kind of Just attitude. Enough. Yeah. I, it, it keeps getting slightly more extreme every episode. Mm-hmm. Which is exactly what they did with Mario. And exactly what they did with Captain Barnes. Uh, and everybody else. With the virus. Yeah. So I, I expect Lee to bust out I, as a fully fledged supervillain or villainess uh, before the end of the season. I don't know how that's going to shake out. I have postulated before Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, that, Mm -hmm. that she would uh, be the first person to be cured from the virus. But I mean, I I, I guess we'll see. I think it's more fun if she goes crazy. I guess we'll see, but I just sickly watch update over. Okay. So, and Jim also gave her a side eye according to Costco. He did very <laughs> much. Uh, but he also watched her very longingly as she walked away at the end. He did. He was like, "Oh." And she was like, eh. Eh. "Okay." Yeah. Um, so what do we think is going to happen with this limited partnership when it devo- dissolves? Because we really haven't mentioned anything about Penguin Enigma and all uh-huh. of that. Um, so we know that Babs isn't going to kill Enigma. That's just not going to happen. But yeah. what are the chances that it's not going to go? Or the- is she? Because she talked about that with Tabby when Nigma wasn't there. Right. She, I didn't say she wouldn't try. Yeah. I'm just saying she will not succeed. Uh, sickly watch update. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Derby kid in the chat room says sickly watch update. But not sickly. S-I-C-K-L-Y. Yes. <laughs> so. uh, let's see. What are the chances... Uh, that it won't go the other way. I'm a little f- scared for my favorite siren because I don't want Ed to like take her out of the you game. You know, Cost Commotion agrees with you. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Cost Commotion says, I still think he will kill her. So, Oh, wait. Who is that in reference to? I, I'm assuming she she's talking about uh, Nigma and Babs. See, and I thought it was Jim and Lee. Okay, either, anyway, either way. anyway, anyway, either way. use names, people. Um, <laughs> let's see, what is it? And what about Tabby and Butch? We know that they aren't on Team Nigma after that whole debacle mm-hmm. not so long ago with Tabby's amazing healing hands. Um, <clears throat> Why do you always have to be undercutting me like that? <laughs> I'll get it in three. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, team Nigma after what? what, what, what uh, wait, what? They aren't Team Nigma after that thing after long ago but are they really going to get in the middle of him and babs i wouldn't want to be in the middle of that fight Mm. or are nigma and babs actually going to have some sort of an amicable split since she really seems to want to run and rebuild the mob families of gotham and ed is just ed and i have no idea what that guy wants but i don't feel like he wants to take over the mob world i feel like he's he's the lone wolf ha lone wolf see jim and lee i understand her um but but no uh he he doesn't 
he doesn't want concentrated power like that. He no. just he, I I think now that he's satisfied his uh his need for vengeance mm-hmm. in this situation, he's just going to be out for fun, you know. Right. And that's what I'm saying is I don't know if He's like I don't even know if they actually will kill kill each other off. They're yeah. be- they're better off as allies than as enemies. Mm, definitely. But will either of them really? Well, will Babs realize that? Because Ed will know that. Yeah, I we, don't know. Just, we will just see all of these questions. Hmm. So many questions. Uh, went over in the chat room says couples drama with Tabby is why I predict Butch will gravitate back to Penguin. Mm. They can bond over loves who did them wrong. I don't see that happening. I could almost. I I mean. I, I think I would much rather see um, fish come back and Butch go to fish. That could be that could be. And I mean, I did enjoy, though, that Penguin called him out as being your muscle, your only muscle. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I definitely um, I someone has to find Penguin in that in that uh, in, in the that water river. So, I mean, it might. No, he's going to crawl out and no, take I, somebody, I, kill I, somebody for a sandwich again. I, I this was, is how this works. I was going to say, uh, you know, if you have nowhere else to go, Fish Mooney might seem like a really good choice. And mm-hmm. he did probably engender some goodwill yep. uh, with how he let her go uh, back earlier. Because he season, didn't have to. Which I have some stuff to talk about. Fantastical. Uh, okay. There were a lot of season one Pangy parallels in this episode. So. First of all, I loved Penguin's mm-hmm. "quote unquote" death scene in this episode. Obviously, he'll be back, uh, but if he, if he never comes back, I think this would have made a really good send off for him. It mm-hmm. would have kind of closed the loop on his story a little bit. Yeah. Uh, for once, we see Penguin truly pay for the awful things he's done. No talking his way out of it. No sandwich eaten. Uh, he gets back all of the the bad karma he's put out in the world since season one. At the hands of Ed Nigma. Ed yeah. Nigma delivers almost justice for everything that Penguin's done up to this point. Right. Uh, per- I- I'm thinking, though, that perhaps when Penguin does come back from this incident, mm-hmm. it'll make him more like the Penguin we know from the comics. Careful, considered, but not a- afraid to uh, break some uh, some eggs when necessary. Uh, he'll be less psycho and needy and more businessman, consummate professional with... Uh, gray moral area <laughs> we'll gray, say yes uh but they, they, there are a couple of big uh parallels between penguin's first appearance in season one and his last scene here mm-hmm. first of all just like season one he's taken out to the docks to be shot and disposed of in the river only this time jim gordon isn't the one with the trigger mm-hmm. and then uh penguin has this uh i created edward nigma speech uh that he gives to Ed right there at the end and it's very similar. And I went and watched this speech before we started the episode just Triple to speed. refresh myself. But very similar to the speech Fish uh, gave to Penguin in her last appearance early on the in period. season three. Uh, she says that uh, the best thing in her life was turning Oswald Cobblepot into the Penguin. Mm-hmm. And that's very much the same sentiment that Penguin is Giving trying to, to deliver Ed here. Mm-hmm. I, I think he's expecting to get the same mercy from Ed that uh, he gave to Fish in that situation. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't quite work out like that. Nope. Not so much. But I re- if if I didn't know that the Penguin was an important part of the Batman mythos I think he was forever done. and ever. Yeah, I think he was done. Because this felt like a nice, like I said, a nice close off to his arc. You know, he, got, he wanted power. He got all the power in the world. But because he's a jerk, mm-hmm. uh, it finally came back to bite him. Yeah. You know, uh, no matter what good intentions there were or anything. Yeah. But the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You know, he's going to be back. Basically. Uh, Lone Wolf Pack says, Nigma also talks uncomfortably close to Penguin. Yeah. Uh, like, dude, back up just a taste. <laughs> LOL. I thought he was going to kiss him and then push him off the cliff. That that would have been messed up. Like, that would have been. Here, you have love. Now, you, now don't. you don't. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, anything else fun over here? Mm, not. Uh, uh, Butch just wants Tabby to settle down and start a family, and she just wants to shoot everyone. Yeah, yeah. I love and that. Uh, Coscomotion thinks that maybe Fish will trick Butch and cross Babs. Mm. I could have seen that. I could see that too. Now that there's a vacuum of power, Fish is going to step in there and get in the mix. See, I think know? that you know maybe she was just waiting for the whole world to self destruct again. Mm. Interesting. Speaking of Butch and Tabby, you wanted yes. to finish up the conversation talking about. I him, right? love the comic relief of Butch and Tabby this week. So first, it was great that Butch was back. Completely inexplicably, like we got no reason why he was gone in the last two episodes. He was shooting a commercial or something. Something. Uh, uh, he's been doing a lot of convention stuff. I think. Um, he was missed. Let's see. They bicker like an old married couple from bits <laughs> about Butch knocking Penguin out and having to carry carry him again, which was so funny. Um, to 
who could get the confession in less minutes was fantastic. Um, I hope that they stick around literally just like this for a while because I could use the undercutting and the teasing each other. Yeah. I'm better than you. And it's just funny. And you have to carry him now. Son of a... <laughs> that was awesome. So thank you, Butch and Tabby, for that. Okay. Do you have your notebook handy? I do. But do you want to do some... I mean, we can. Quibbles we and bits. have 15 minutes of voicemails. Yet again, Wayne Manor has no security. <laughs> That's so true. But the power's out. Yeah, that's very um, true. The city's one giant dumpster fire. What does Jerome want? Uh, yet again, Alfred is a badass. Uh, Alfred uh, has killed but convinces Bruce not to. He sees potential is mm. something I wrote down. Love is about sacrifice. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bruce is vicious, going full vigilante. And uh, I already said Bruce sees Batman in the mirror. Mm. And Alfred kicking the S out of that Joker. Uh. Alfred versus the three. Jim in the corner. Alfred gives the lay of the land. I loved that. Like, we never mentioned that scene. Mm -hmm. That was really fun. And I just like how at the very end, the guy's like, who are you talking to? He's like, me. (laughs) Nice. I don't know why I enjoyed that so much, but I did. Okay, over in the chat room, Lone Wolfpack says, well, we have to see if Doctor Strange found a way to fix Fish because she wasn't doing well last time we saw her. That's because she, But that's because she was using her power. Yeah. That was what wore her down, maybe now that she has rested. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I wonder if her powers just went away or if he'll fa- find a way to bring her back with the powers. Maybe mm-hmm. they'll be enhanced, Steven. Oh, I'm sure. Okay, so now is the time to finally put a staple in the face of this episode and uh kind kind of figure out what we think about it using the arbitrary scale mm-hmm. and appropriately this week's arbitrary scale is 77 rusty staples uh feel free to chime in in the chat room Anne marie out of 77 rusty staples how many rusty staples do you give this episode keep in mind they're rusty because they have bruce's blood all over them go mm. 77 why because it was amazing <laughs> what more do i need like we just went through <laughs> we actually had an hour worth of discussion. <laughs> yeah. No, this was just an amazing. Not ep- to mention, we never even mentioned that Jim literally punched the Joker's face off. That was pretty cool. So disgusting. Um, I just thought it was absolutely fan. Everybody did like. No storyline was to the point where I was confused. I didn't like it. Nothing was acted weird. Mm -hmm. The weirdness was appropriate when it was there. There was comedy. There was disgustingness. There were piranhas. There, you know, maybe it could have used a cupcake or something. (laughs) Like, actually, Cupcake, the character, I liked him. He was fun. Bring him back. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, like, I don't know what else I would have wanted. Mm -hmm. It did every, like, this three-episode arc did exactly what it was supposed to do. Oh, yeah. And I want to see them try. Made everybody keep... really upset that it's not coming back anytime soon. Right. But I want to see them actually um, hold him down in Arkham. Yeah. let's. See. That's what I'm curious. Over in the chat room, Derby Kid gives it 77 rusty staples. Uh, Bobby Hawk says 77, obviously. Wynn says 74 rusty staples. Not perfect because that darn uh, Gordon never Gordon. shoots the bad guy when he has the perfect opportunity. And uh, then Lone Wolf Pack uh, says 77 rusty staples and a rusty staple gun. And uh, and uh, Wynn also says it points <laughs> off for a uh, stupid cop not just kicking the flame away from the ice cube. Yeah. And uh, then uh, Bobby Hawk mentions that even you gave it a rare perfect. Uh, you I think always, that's the second week in a row I've given it a you perfect. You always leave room for improvement. I do always leave room for improvement. But you it, know what? I wouldn't improve any yeah. of this. And uh, I, I, I'm going to say... If There's I, no way. There's like five of us that are giving it a perfect score. Third. No, I'm just kidding. 77 rusty staples and an entire warehouse full of fresh staples that's over on the other side of Gotham Ooh, from the circus. Fresh staples. Yeah, even the fresh staples, the expensive ones. Uh, no, it was fantastic. Uh, like I said up at the top of the episode, this is not only one of my, probably my favorite episode of Gotham ever, but this is one of my favorite Joker Batman stories mm-hmm. ever because this is a, uh, I like how so many people have been uh, talking about, no, you can't have the Joker until you have Batman, but this is, I yes, you can. It's an origin show. Well, I, I think they did it. Well, a lot of times in the comics, Batman is responsible for Joker's origin or like Guess what? the version of the origin we know, like from the killing joke. But the thing is, I, I think it, it was just so brilliant that they were they took that. They mm-hmm. acknowledged it and then they reversed it mm-hmm. instead of uh, jo- Batman being responsible for the Joker. Joker's responsible Joker for Batman. is responsible for Batman, which I think is an even more powerful way to play it. OK, uh, just because. You, you know, evil doesn't 
there's you know an argument in the comics in a lot of comics and a lot of comic book movies that maybe the existence of superheroes is why supervillains exist maybe because of batman there is a joker but i think it's way more powerful to say this superhero this ultimate good guy is a response to the ultimate evil that already exists in the world and already you know exist in our world mm-hmm. and it, i i think that's a much more hopeful message and i think i like i said i just think they they did a fantastic uh job with it overall i'm getting a little teary it was good it was good darn it it was good oh. And uh, Lone Wolf Pack says uh, Catwoman should have been in it. She would have Very been stealing true. all the things. Maybe she could have saved that uh, that thing, the Hooger. Well, the, uh, that's helpful. The owl. The oh, owl. you know, she probably could have saved the owl. She could have saved the owl. Yeah. Here's to the owls. Here's to the owls. Okay, well, that about does it for our main discussion. We still have a lot of feedback to get to because since we gave you guys an extra day, you gave us a lot Apparently of feedback. Apparently, everybody decided to send in feedback. We, know we so- like it. We know sometimes people bow out b- before the news and the feedback, though, so we just wanted to mention that we are going to be doing some episodes in the interim before- Not many, but a few. Before April, like I'm sure we're going to be reviewing the Lego Batman movie- uh, we're probably going to try and get someone from the show on for a long form interview. And there's the Gotham novel out now, a prequel to the show. That's right. That we're probably going to review. So I have to read a book. So there's three at least. And like we said, you know, send us your thoughts on mm-hmm. how you found our show, how you found Gotham, and how our show has enhanced your viewing of Gotham. Legends of Gotham at gmail.com. 424 274 2352 is the voicemail number. Now, on to the news. News. First up, the ratings. Many shows, including Gotham, <clears throat> dipped to 10th on monday night uh it dipped down to a 1.1 1. 1. 1. 1, yes. which isn't terrible it's uh it, it the way the article made it sound was that like the whole night dipped it wasn't uh anything in particular yeah i just found it a little surprising since we knew this was such a big episode mm-hmm. i'm sure april will be big though yeah, and I'm I'm sure this probably made up a lot on uh, DVRs and stuff like that. I am not doing a book report, Derby Kid. Okay, so we don't have... Yep. A, it's not really a proper trailer for episode 15, uh, but we do have sort of a preview of the last chunk of the season for Gotham, and so we'll watch that real quick. Get a close-up on Ed Nigma in his eyes, so I wonder who the main focus is going to be. Oh, it might be... He says, me, as I say that, Ed Nigma. Uh, painting with a question mark, a lot of laughing, a lot of uh, Bruce fighting street thugs, uh, a lot of grandiose Riddler standing there. He has the green suit on. Looks like maybe he took over the mayor ship. We get a hint of Yanni Bruce. And then we get the Gotham logo green with the question mark. I love mark. it. So I'm so excited. It's basically, uh, it's pretty much guaranteed it's going to be it's going to be the Riddler half season uh, for sure. Uh, but very exciting. Shame we have to wait until April. But don't worry. Legends of Gotham will be here for you. Okay, we do have some uh, a lot of feedback, like There's I said. So much feedback. Uh, to get to before we head out of here. Uh, you can always send us feedback. Legends of Gotham at gmail.com. Tweet us at Legends of Gotham. The Facebook is facebook.com slash groups slash Legends of Gotham. Mm-hmm. And the voicemail number is 424-274-2352. Again, that's 424-274-2352. Normally, mm-hmm. we start with Bobby's voicemail, but we're we're gonna decline. We're gonna move him a little lower on the list just because his was the longest voicemail and probably mm-hmm. the most pertinent. Uh, so we're gonna save probably that the most just like you <laughs> for, for a little later. But uh, first up is Andy from the Flash Podcast. Take it away, Andy. Hey, Anne Marie and Bill, how you guys doing? Hey, Andy from the Flash Podcast. Just wanted to give, leave my thoughts for uh, um, the the winter finale of Gotham. Uh, my God, it's one of my <laughs> all-time favorite episodes of the whole series. I, the whole uh, look. I, you guys know that I'm a huge Jerome fan, and in you know, look, I, it, if this episode is one thing, it's proved that this the Jerome is definitely the Joker of this continuity. Mm-hmm. I don't care who else they introduce later on. This is my Joker, and mm-hmm. you know, this is my look at this Joker from now on. <laughs> and uh, whoever else comes in, you know, if should someone else become the Joker, I won't count them. <laughs> and the whole thing about him and Bruce having their show now was just epic. I mean, again, how is this an 8 p.m. Sh- show? They should be That's on 9 so... p.m. or even 10 p.m. Yeah. or whatever. Well, uh, you know, when the last time, one of the last times we interviewed John Stevens, he was talking about how 
it's a very fine line. Uh, they'll allow a lot of stuff in the script, mm-hmm. and then they, they'll they kind have to edit it. They'll, they'll have to like uh, I when he cut when the penguin cut off the guitar player's fingers. Oh, they were only allowed came, one finger. Yeah, it came down to the number of fingers that hit the floor. Yeah. So. Uh, no, but I love the fact that Bruce came to realization of, you know, find that one rule for himself about not killing. So I thought that was really powerful. And, um, you know, so that's why, you know, and I hope to see him and Jerome go at it again at some point down the line and um, before he suits up, you know. <laughs> and uh, the whole thing at the end with Enigma uh, and, and um, Oswald, it was heartbreaking, breaking, but at the same time, he's not dead. For anyone who really thinks he's dead, it's like, no, he's a breakout character of the show. Why would he be dead? So, uh, yeah, no, but overall, this was my favorite episode, all my all time favorite episode of the season and the whole <laughs> show as a whole. So yeah, I am. Um, I can't wait to see what they do when they come back, and um, yeah, I can't wait to listen to your discussion. So have a good one, and talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you Thank very you, much, Andy. Andy. Uh, we we did get some YouTube comments. Uh, I'll just say that Kawhi Fluff said Theo's needs don't matter to Jerome. It's a personal issue as far as right. why he For was why going he after Bruce. To kill him, yeah. Uh, Dylan Bush says, uh, "I'm sorry to say, guys, Jerome was only a three episode arc, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Then winter break." Uh, the show is set to come back in two and a half months. Yeah, we're Dr- really not happy about it. Drew either dies, no, nope. nope. or goes into hiding. No, nope. I mean, after fourteen, uh, Mister Freeze, Firefly, the Court of Owls, and possibly Solomon Grundy, Grundy are going to be the main focus in the last parts of the season. Um, I will half agree with that. I think it's really going to be a lot of the Court of Owls. <clears throat> um. And I think it'll bring back Freeze and Firefly. I think, you know, they may yeah. each get an episode or two, but I don't think they're going to be main focuses. Grundy, I mean, I, dude's got to break out. Well, but. I mean, they they have said that Solomon Grundy was going to appear this season. I think it's going to be either Barnes or Mario. I think it's going to have something to do with the Tetch virus. Oh. So, so we'll see Mario. there. And, and then Doc Dicer uh, wrote a very We're not going to read the whole thing, comments dude. calling out different time codes in our last episode and everything. Mm-hmm. Loved all of them, but ended and we just wanted to point this out i loved your shout out at the end uh you guys are the best assists you smiley face you are the best assist you are the best assist smiley face okay next up a voicemail from cliff take it away cliff hello bill and Anne marie it's hey. cliff from lexington kentucky oh, hello, I'm, cliff. Uh, glad everything seems to be okay with you guys um mm-hmm. i thought that was the greatest episode of gotham ever i've ever seen uh <laughs> yes. the joker or jerome was killing it um the penguin and riddler storyline was awesome uh the only problem i had with the whole thing is i don't think jokers uh, or jerome's thugs just up, snuck up on um, alfred like that but mm. that's small potatoes it was a wonderful episode and even though he's my favorite character, seeing Jerome get his face punched off was uh, kind of predictable, but awesome. Glad it happened, and uh, I just can't wait till to see more. Okay, that's all I have. You guys take care. Bye. Thank you very Thank much, you. Cliff. So great to hear from you, too. Absolutely. Okay, uh, next up is Joel from Portland. Take it away, Joel. Hey, Bill and Anne-Marie. It's Joel from hey. Portland. I uh, just want to drop you guys a line, not necessarily for uh, to be played on the show, but uh, just say hi. I haven't talked to you guys on the chat for a while. I got a new job and promotion, which is great. Congrats. But it messes with my schedule, and I'm never able to be on any of the shows. By the way, uh, Mm -hmm. fair warning, if you call into our voicemail line... You will be played on a show. You will be played, usually. I mean, 97% of the time, even if you uh, say it's not the show. Anyway, let's just listen to this week's show, and I was wondering, Bill, if you knew if there was ever a rogues gallery villain that was treated from, you know, in Arkham successfully and already came back... um, back into Gotham City society. And uh, it just got me to thinking about the fact that you said that Bruce Wayne could do a lot more with his money if he put it towards public services rather <laughs> than just being Batman. But anyway, uh, I just Batman. want to drop you guys a line. I'll probably do so next week or I guess tomorrow night after the show. But, uh, but anyway, just wondering about your thoughts on that or if you knew if that was a story. Thanks. Okay, I, now there are several examples I could bring up here, but probably the biggest one that popped out to me the second you asked that, Joel, was this guy right here, Mr. Edward Nigma, <gasps> a.k.a. the Riddler. Because, Riddle me this, sir. Because he, he was a supervillain uh, for years and years and years. And I think it was like the late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere in there. It all kind of mushes together after a while. But they did an arc where 
he was completely reformed in Arkham, and then he became a, a private detective in Gotham City hmm. and actually contracted out with the police and helped Batman on several cases. That might still be the status quo, I, I although I don't know if, since the New 52, because I haven't read any Riddler stories from the New 52. Interesting. But uh, that, that was sort of the, the status quo for all the way up through the Flashpoint, I, hmm. I, I believe, so... So, yeah, yeah, so that's happened. I think uh, Killer Croc had a reform period, too. He's probably back to being evil now. Probably. Uh, Clayface, His name is Killer Croc. Yeah, Clayface, too. And, uh, of course, there's – and, I mean, it, she doesn't get to Arkham that much, but Catwoman uh, is more of a hero than a villain in the comics these days. So. Oh, is she? Yeah, yeah. I don't definitely. read the comics. <laughs> okay, uh, we have a letter here from Christian Gray. You want to read that? Hold on, let me find it. There's, there's a lot going on here. Okay. It's right here. I bolded it for you. Did you bold it? Yep. You just bolded it just the second, didn't you? Yep. Uh, okay. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> as y'all have long predicted and many suspected, including me, it does look like Jerome will be Joker. And it looks like Ed is the Riddler. Now, you knew that from the beginning. Um, w- does this mean that we will see Bruce Wayne as Batman very soon or have TPTB? The powers that be. Thank you. Indicated that the show will be an origin story. We will, will not see Bruce Wayne as Batman. There's been a lot of fans who have said that, but I don't think they've specifically I don't think they have said that on the show. It. No, um, I only asked this because of the way Bruce Wayne fought Jerome and <coughs> Selena showed that he has tremendously improved his fighting skills. True that, brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, I w- it would have been better to if the show developed his combat training over the season rather than simply displaying his skills to us in this episode. Well, they've been kind of... They've been giving us little bits. I I mean, he's been training boxing and stuff with Alfred since season one, so... Mm, Interesting. Uh, Let's see. We have seen Bruce being trained by Alfred a few times, but I guess we are left to assume that Alfred continued to train him. Yes. Yes, you are. Um, Plus, he had those months of living out on the streets with Selena. That probably did. He probably did learn a lot then. Uh, For me, what's impressive is that Bruce has trained truly started to uh, to better understanding the criminal mind and it was awesome that jerome was able to see that bruce was playing him but in true joker form he went along with it <laughs> um one uh this is probably too personal of a question hmm. um but what is the primary reason bill and Amory watch gotham hmm. um is it to see bruce wayne's transformation into ba- batman or do you watch it for gordon battling his inner demons i really don't care about gordon i'm not gonna lie to you um uh-huh. <clears throat> I th- I think of all like comic booky type people. I always mm-hmm. kind of liked Batman, but we were yeah. I didn't grow up in like comic stuff. And when we found out they were making the show, we're like, and there's our next podcast. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing was, is season one was more of a police procedural too, and I really like police procedurals, like really, really. <laughs> and like I really them. like Batman, so we're like, this is the this perfect show work. to do a podcast about. Yeah, and. Yeah, we got really addicted. Uh, let's see. Two. Also, Penguin claims. Well, I, I didn't get to answer. Oh, I'm sorry. I no. I it, sort of thought that was part of it. I I tune into Gotham. Really, I, I tune in more for the villains than for Bruce or Gordon. Bruce and Gordon are, are nice pepper on the steak that is the villain stories. I think, mm-hmm. uh, particularly, uh, you know, Penguin and Nigma and Jerome have been wonderful journeys to take in. Yeah. It's been, it's been nice. I, I have a, up here on this board behind me this Joker uh, series uh, from the 70s by Elliot S. Magan, a trade paperback of it. Mm-hmm. But outside of that and a gra- uh, graphic novel by Brazen, Brian Azzarello called Joker, mm-hmm. you really don't get to see a lot of fleshing out uh, like his big story. stories centered around the villains as much. It's really more a story with villains that's still centered around Batman. So gotcha. that's what keeps me coming back. Nice. Um, over in the chat room, Costa Commission says, will they switch David, uh, David out with an older actor and bring Batman to fruition? And Bobby says, no, I think they will let David, uh, David grow into the role. And I, th- I kind of am inclined to agree. I think they'll take their time because really in about maybe two years, he'll be, well, I'd say Man like, enough. like he he's he's getting big at such a rate now. That boy's growing up. I mean, he's um, like seventeen. It's not. But but you know, I I think he I think he would make a believable Batman, and probably probably by next year. You know, so right. if if the if you know season if we see him start bulking up, yeah, then we'll know. Season four or five, if season four is the last season or season five is the last season, I can totally see them doing a half season or a full season. With him as bat, maybe not as Batman, but maybe as a, a masked vigilante in See, Gotham. See, I want I want that to be how it ends. 
Mm-hmm. I want to see like the Batcave re reopened uh-huh. and like the f- one of the first times he goes out full head to toe Batman see, and, and seen. I'd like to see a batch of episodes with him as Batman I mean, just because you- one, I feel like that would be way too Smallville. Uh, a smallville of an ending no. and uh two i think i think the kid can pull it off oh you i know? think he can absolutely he's fantastic so i uh, wrap up with a uh, christian Dre. i'm working on it uh, there yeah. was there was questions let's see um <laughs> uh, questions. okay also penguin <laughs> claims ed would have killed isabella too ed doesn't deny it did you guys take that as an admission on ed's part that ed believed that he would have likely killed her i don't think he would have I think I think there was the potential there, and I, I there's think, always the potential. But I think Penguin said that because he knew it would get under Ed's mm-hmm. skin, and that's what he was trying to do at that point to save himself. Agreed. Also, Ed and Penguin are both murderers, and yet both of their stories hinge on love. Mm-hmm. For Penguin, that loves his mother. For Ed, that love is Isabella. For what a callback to the pilot. Again, Penguin is shot on the dock. Does he survive? Mm. I assume Ed missed the heart and any other of vital organ internally, probably or intentionally. Uh, any predictions on the court's plans for Jim Gordon? I got nothing, man. I don't know what they're doing. I think I think they're gonna try and make him uh, get, get him a more powerful position they're going to try and either make him commissioner or captain mm-hmm. of the gcpd so they can control him right and i how he's, i th- how i think it's going to play out is he's going to go along with it get the power then turn it back around on them yeah there's no way he'll that let would it be go. my guess i like that um lastly he wraps up with really really pissed that we have to wait <laughs> forever for gotham to arrive many sad faces yes many you know Definitely. what i have many sad faces too okay uh, next up is a voicemail from rebecca thank you christian by the way uh, thank you rebecca take it away Woo! what's up legends of gotham what's, what's up, up? johnson and i'm calling about the season three episode of gotham titled the gentle art of making enemies wow what an episode <laughs> i could go on and on about how great cameron's drone is because he is he is spectacular and he delivers every time he's on screen But I have two things I want to brag on even more. Number one, I loved everything about Bruce Wayne in this episode. I loved him showing his guts to get stapled, which led him to having a chance to find a way to escape on his own, even though it was super gross and it became kind of a close call. Mm -hmm. His determination to get out of those handcuffs, never giving up when time was running out, is such a heroic moment and a great one for a future Batman. I also should mention I got some serious goosebumps when Bruce made his declaration not to kill. Mm -hmm. Number two, I am so surprised by how much I have enjoyed this Oswald Enigma (laughs) storyline. When they first started it up with Oswald thinking he was in love with Ed, I was like, "Eh, I don't know how I feel about this. But it has turned out to be some fantastic drama with a lot of twists and turns. Mm -hmm. And boy, that beautifully shot cliffhanger with Penguin shot and bloodied and falling into the water was executed perfectly. Gotham is going to have a tough time topping this episode, but I look forward to it trying. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Woo-hoo. And uh, if you didn't know, you can always catch Rebecca during the Gotham hiatus over at Supergirl Radio, where she talks about Supergirl every Tuesday night, which means she normally can't she send records the while we record. It's a yeah. very awkward situation. But since we delayed a day, she was able to send in voicemail. Thank we you checked very her much, schedule. Uh, <laughs> you know how we feel about you. You know Rebecca. how we feel. Next up is Shalane. Take it away. Hey, Bill. Hey, Emery. Hey. Hello, legend of Gothamites. Um, this is Shalane, a.k.a. Fish Mooney Cosplayer with Cause of Commotion here in Orlando, mm-hmm. Florida. And I wanted to call to talk a little bit about the winter finale. First of all, if Robin Lord Taylor is not nominated for some sort of award next year, I don't know what's going on because the <laughs> man, I mean, un- incredible, incredible, incredible. That's all I can say. Um Everyone, a phenomenal job. As far as the cinematography, I just love the way that the very last shot um, with Oswald and Ed um, at the pier, I mean, um, 
who was outstanding. And it was almost like full circle for Oswald because if you think about it, it was him and Jim at the pier in the very beginning, and then it's like him again Mm -hmm. um, with Ed. But we all know that no one stays dead in Gotham. So as far as I'm concerned, he's not dead. He probably has on a bulletproof vest or something. They've even said that on the show. Yeah. So anyway, Babs and Tabs, what can I say? They're back at it again. But I know they think. Babs, Tabs, back Babs again. Think you're going to be the queen of Gotham, but you know who's watching from a distance. That's all I can say <laughs> about that one. So um, look forward to April 24th when they come back. And um, you guys just keep knocking it out of the park. You guys are great. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And yeah, one of the episodes we want to do over the hiatus, we still need to figure out details. But they, uh, Cost Commotion lives like Probably 15 minutes from us. Maybe 15 minutes away. Yeah. We need uh, to so, like get together. Yeah. We just got to arrange it and stuff. You know, uh, give us like a week to kind of come down off of this Gotham we'll high and uh, we, we'll, fi- we'll figure it out. We'll figure out deets. Um, okay. Let's see here. Uh, Jason Wiley over at the Facebook group said, what a spectacular winter finale. I got choked up with those Bruce scenes. Uh, did anyone uh, else get some major enter the dragon vibes with that room of mirrors scene? I uh, love the heroic music cues when Bruce was standing his ground. And after all the teasing about Batman, I'd be so happy for season four to jump ahead a few years. Uh, do you think Gotham writers should just say beep it and <laughs> steer uh, the show into a Batman show already as it'd be a massive anticlimax not to? I think Fox and DC would be down with that. I like I, I think they should throw it into a, a Batman show. I don't think a time jump needs to happen for that to happen. I think at most, they'll need, I think they'll episode. maybe have to do like a six month or something. Yeah. Well, they're going to have to do something because it's been like three months. Well, they always do like a, a time jump in between breaks and stuff. Right. Like and I think, you know, a three to six, but we don't need to go like a whole year or two years or anything. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, finally, at long last, it's Bobby Hawk. Take it away, Bobby. Hey guys, it's Bobby. Hey! So, right. this week's episode may be like what I've been waiting for since this show began. Um, uh, okay, let me just start off with the whole uh, Enigma and Oswald thing. Or, yeah, Enigma and Oswald. Um, I did not expect that to play out in this episode, or before the winter finale for that matter. Um, I thought that we'd be getting that played out more. Um, I... That's not to say I'm upset about the way it played out. I thought it played out great. I thought everyone, you know, um, I did not see the whole double switch thing with Nigma at the end as far as like Barbara. Uh, it was great to see Butch. I didn't think to see that I'd see. Um, <clears throat> I thought Barbara <laughs> was being sincere when she was trying to get Penguin to turn on Nigma. But. It, by the way, if you sense hesitancy in Bobby's voice, he let me know that uh, this was his second recording. It, yeah, the first one was over ten minutes long, so he was like trying to say everything Get in that ten minutes things. in five minutes. So. Yeah. To find out that Nigma had set that all up to begin with, and then to see that it had thrown him off when Penguin set didn't turn him in, proving that he did care for him. Uh, but in the end, Nigma still had to do what he did because Penguin was responsible for the murder of the woman he loved. Um, but Penguin was right in saying some of the things what he was saying about like, you know, I saved you from yourself. You know what you would have done. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, in the end, maybe he's right. Um, but that, that doesn't matter. Um, he took out Penguin and I'm sure Penguin is not taken out. I mean, we've seen him fall for dead into the water before and I'm sure he'll rise again. Um, For a sandwich. But I just thought that played out great. And after seeing the promo for, you know, what's to come in the next few months, uh, in like April, I think they said, I cannot wait to see Corey Michael Smith in full regalia as the Riddler. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Moving on, as far as Gordon and Bullock are concerned, um, I know Bullock is technically the captain at this point, uh, but acting let's captain. face it, Gordon is more or less the acting, acting captain. captain. I mean, I'm pretty sure I saw him like bark orders at Bullock to, <laughs> at, in this episode. Um, and I know I, I made the same notice uh, in the last episode as well. So I don't I think it's going to be a small uh, skip and a jump before we before we actually see Gordon just as captain, period. In fact, I think we'll probably see it uh probably like the last episode or two of this season will be him promoted to captain or could tie into that whole court of owls theory I had whatever the case may be um Mm -hmm. whether how likely that actually would be in the real world that we're not (laughs) dealing with the real real 
real world. So moving on. Uh, it was great to see that storyline converge with uh, Bruce and Jerome storyline. Um, again, they're still not calling him Joker, uh, Joker, but come on, this is this is uh, Jerome is Joker. And I love how they used all the different versions of the Joker to like uh, to to create his, this version of of, you know, Jerome. Um, I think Cameron Monaghan is mo- knocking it out of the park. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think everyone in this episode was knocking it out of the park, to be honest with you. But his portrayal of Joker, um, while he is able to borrow from so many other elements of previous live action and animated characters and still make it his own. So I think that's great. Um, the whole face Joker. thing, I thought it was a uh, great not, you know, just everything, how they give like nods to the, to the different versions. Uh, I'm rambling at this point. <laughs> Jerome slash Joker is great. It's no surprise how I feel about that. Um, and then as far as Bruce, um, I thought that his not only did we see the birth of Joker tonight, we've been seeing it, but we've really seen the Bruce, the birth of Batman tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, him realizing that there needs to be a hero, him realizing that there is a line, him with that pain and the whole staples in the arm thing. And then like we had a scene, a, a moment where it was like Bruce Wayne slash Batman tied up in like a death defying trap that he had to get out of at the last minute. Uh, just a bat oh, trap. I bat trap. just keep going on and on. Um, Okay, so uh, the the scene in the Maze of Mirrors, the showdown between Bruce and Jerome, that was epic. Uh, I believe Bill used the words poetic or the word poetic, and I mm-hmm. he's not wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a scene, uh, the scene where we, he's finally taking Jerome down and he's about to, to stab him with that mirror shard. And then he looks in the mirror and sees like, in two mirrors, he sees two different reflections of himself, mm-hmm. one with the mirror shard and one without. And it was almost as if, like, these oh. are the two ways you could go. Very nice, I didn't Bobby. see that. And in that moment, he realized what he needed to do. And then to drive that home with the scene later with Alfred. I will uh, not sent chills up my spine. Still just thinking about it. Ugh. Um <laughs> Such, such a great episode. And of course, we've got teased with the, the Court of Owls coming in, and we finally see uh, what did we decide to call him? Yanni uh, Bruce. Num- uh, like, I know he was previously known as Yanni Bruce. He will so always call him previously Bruce. known as Yanni Bruce. I, I'm just going to say that, you know, Yanni, he had long hair back in the 90s. He has short hair now, so it still applies. Um, that was great. Uh, I don't know where. I mean, it, such a great episode. Everyone just totally knocked it out of the park. I cannot wait to see what they come back with in a few months. Cannot wait to hear what you guys thought. Oh, yeah, arbitrary scale. Okay, so my <laughs> arbitrary scale is going to be out of, let's see if I can estimate, let's see, uh, 87 staples around Jerome's face. I'm going to give it all 87 and, like, even the three that he put in Bruce's arm. Uh, this nice. sh- This episode was awesome. It was epic. And... If this is what they're giving us now, I can't wait to see what they have to come. Thank you very much, Bobby. And yet again, you called my arbitrary scale. That, I was just about to say, Almost I'm like, exact, this is kind of disgusting. Within 10 staples of my arbitrary scale. Yeah. Good job. Get out of my head, Bobby. Okay, and we're going to wrap up here with uh, Mike Pasqua. Take it away, Mike. Hello, Woo! Bill and Anne Marie. I'm calling because I won't be able to catch the show live. So mm. here's my feedback. We got a we got a deep, deep look at, look at the Joker, or a possible Joker, and... That was fun, but what was also fun was seeing uh, Bruce take another take another big step toward being Batman by deciding that there is a line that he just will not cross, and we finally also got another look at Yanni Bruce or possible a possible talent, or we don't know what kind of training the court has given him since we've seen him last, but it, it can't be good for Bruce. <laughs> and furthermore, uh, what's happening? What's going to happen when Cat returns? And this has been Mike Pasqua. Thank you, Mr. Pasqua. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Bruce and Selena are going to have a very good relationship. I think they're kind of done. Yeah. I think this is where they, they split to be Batman and Catwoman. Mm-hmm. Though, obviously, they'll recognize one another. Oh, they, we've been talking a little over in the chat room about the broken owl. And Lone Wolf Pack uh, says, I'm mm-hmm. hoping the Riddler puts the owl back together. Seems like a puzzle that he would like, mm-hmm. especially if the owl ends up on his radar. I like that idea. Mm-hmm. I really like that idea. Yeah, but how is he going to get the pieces of the owl out of the manor? Very true. Very like, true. I don't think... Uh, Anybody's letting him in. 
Just well, saying. I mean, he is the Riddler. He has his ways. He is the Riddler. He has he, his ways. He does have his ways. And uh, Bobby says that he read in the original script. I'm not sure for what episode, uh, but that uh, it had Jerome beheaded. Uh, and he says, I would have thrown my th- phone through the TV. Well, I'm, that would have been an expensive tantrum. I'm not sure. If, <laughs> I'm not sure if that was for this episode or for the last laugh back in season two. Oh, it might have been. Season two but would have made more sense yeah. uh, as far as beheading is concerned. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I, we're, we're going to be, uh, you know, going sporadic here until April. But the, the email is always going to be open. So email us your thoughts about Gotham. Any Gotham news coming along. Send us news stories, too. Yes, please. That'd be great. Uh, legendsofgotham at gmail.com. Tweet us at Legends of Gotham. The Facebook is facebook.com slash groups slash Legends of Gotham. And the voicemail number is 424-274-2352. Again, that's 424-274-2352. Uh, I'd also like to point out that, you know, in the interim... We're not going to be doing Gotham podcasting, but we're still going to be doing podcasting. Right. We have a podcast called We're So Lost, where we rewatch Lost uh, as if we're watching it for the, for the first time. We're at roughly season two, episode six. But we are actually watching it for the first time. Yeah, we've never seen it. Before. So we're going to be that's going to be our new Tuesday night show, and then on Thursday night we do Universe Box. Yes, it's uh, a which pop is, culture and entertainment news, and you know yeah. us. We end up talking a lot of DC stuff, though, we, so definitely check it out if you like uh, news and you like us. Great fit. If you like us, you should watch. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8.30 p.m. EST at twitch.tv slash universebox or live.universebox.com. I, and uh, again, we'd like to thank our chatters. Uh, it's been in flux. It's been in and, in and out. out. We've had Casa Commotion, Bobby Hawk, Lone Wolf, Rebecca mm-hmm. Johnson. Who else? We had, we had Win in there for a little while. There was somebody. Else. Yeah, and a p- bunch of other people. people have been popping, popping in, popping out, out popping but in. But I thank you guys out. so much for joining us here uh, for tonight and, you know, throughout the season. It's been a blast it's been talking so much with fun. you. And we're going to talk to you again in April for sure and for before sure. then for sure. Anne Marie, where can people find you online? You can find me on Twitter at AMD Simone or you can check out my blog, crunchycrafty.com. As for me, you can follow me on Twitter at Bill Meeks. Uh, you can follow all of the podcasts we do at universebox.com. And uh, you can follow uh, Jerome's lead and go sit in a padded cell until a blonde shows up, I guess. Oh. Uh, Harley's probably coming. Um, we but, talked about that already. Oh, yeah. We did talk about that already. Yeah. But <clears throat> I guess that about does it for, for this time. And uh, so, you know, join us next time for more Legends, Legends of, of Gotham. Gotham. I will not kill. It's important, Will. <laughs> okay, guys, before you head out of here, uh, we do have some episode titles here for you. Yes, please. Uh, I know which one I like, but we have several here. Okay, so I'm going to paste them in the chat room right now uh, in just now okay oh. so we have uh i'm every joker awoken uh Pengi parallels uh the biggest joke that's so batman oh, broken that birds bad. and there will be blood we didn't do a that's so batman before <clears throat> we have we did that so penguin oh uh, so this would be a we sequel. really like doing that <laughs> yeah although i don't think either of us were big fans of that so raven nope uh, no, never watched it but yeah go ahead over in the chat room and uh vote your mind. Mm-hmm. Which one should we do? Uh, Emery, what, what do you vote? I'm every Joker. Joker. It's all in me. I'm going to vote for I'm Every Joker, too. Uh, so we have two for uh, uh, that I'm Every Joker. One for That So Batman from Cost of Commotion. What the rest you got? Please vote, mm-hmm. people, if you haven't tuned out yet. Because right now we're two to one. So I'm Every Joker wins right now. Mm-hmm. But That's So Batman's a really good title, too. Yeah, show Batman. And my fingers can wiggle. They're going to wiggle until you guys vote. Oh, for the so love of somebody vote, vote because he'll stand here and wiggle all night. I will. I will. I'll mm-hmm. commit to a bit. No problem. The biggest uh, joke. Then we got one for the biggest joke. <laughs> I See, I like the biggest joke. The biggest joke. I would much better. rather a big cup of joke. <clears throat> Okay, so we have two for I'm Every Joker, one for That's So Batman, one for The Biggest Joke. 
We have two more people in there that can chime in, but they might not be paying attention. They might not be. Uh, so we're going to give it about 15 more seconds, and then One, we're going to call two, it for three, I, I'm Every Joker. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, done. Okay, so I guess, I guess uh, <clears throat> unless... No. We'll give them five no. more seconds. No, that's five, it. Four, they three, have lost their chance. Two, one. Done. Okay. I'm every joker, although I'm every joker. That's that's so Batman. Oh, just do it. That's so Batman would it would have been a good one too. Yeah, uh, we so can use it later though. Yeah, we can. Definitely. Okay. There's no time limit on that so Batman. Nope. Okay, right, uh, well, thank you guys very much uh, uh, for this very extra long episode of uh, Legends of Gotham. Have was, a good night, guys. Bye.